Hello and welcome to Straight Talk. I'm Ayşe Subarkaş. Turkey capped off a major goal in its bid to become a spacefaring country. Colonel Alper Gezeravcı, a decorated fighter pilot, made history by being Turkey's first astronaut having blasted off Thursday from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Together with his American, Italian and Swedish crewmates, Gezeravcı will dock with the International Space Station where he will experiment with everything from human physiology to industrial advancements. James Kim has more. Five, four, three, two, one, ignition, engine full power, and the start. So action three. And with that, Turkey's first astronaut blasts off into space. The four-person crew took off from SpaceX's launch center in Cape Canaveral, Florida further solidifying that space is now a realm for the private sector. Turkey's first astronaut, Colonel Alper Gezer Avja, was part of a mission by Axiom, a privately funded U.S. company which organizes space travel. And they blasted off on board SpaceX's Falcon 9, billionaire Elon Musk's privately made rocket, which is picking up where NASA's retired space shuttle fleet left off. Gezer Avja also caps off a major milestone for Turkey's still burgeoning space agency. Launched in late 2018, one of its major goals was to have its first astronaut in space in just five years. That achievement was made possible through close cooperation with Musk's SpaceX. The billionaire tech mogul's collaboration with Turkey stretches back several years. In 2021, the private space company sent the Turksat 5A satellite into orbit, and there are plans for another launch later this year. The Turkish Space Agency has big ambitions for more astronauts, satellites, and an eventual mission to the moon. But the star of the moment is Gezer Avja, who will stay aboard the International Space Station for two weeks to conduct scientific experiments. And if all goes to plan, Turkey will be seeing a lot more of space in the months and years ahead. James Kim, Straight Talk. That is after this flight. And now for more on Turkey's first manned space mission. Joining me from Orlando, Florida is Halit Mirahmetoğlu. He is the general manager of the Gökman Space and Aviation Training Center. And from Houston, Texas, Andy Turnich. He is an executive director at the Association of Space Explorers. A warm welcome to you both and thanks for joining me on Straight Talks. So, Andy, talk to us about the significance of this launch and how big of a step forward is this for Turkey's endeavors in space? Well, Turkey has made uh, a lot of advancements in the last 10 years in terms of developing the scientific and technological infrastructure uh, to allow them to launch a human being into space. So this is, uh, I think, Ataturk, uh, this fulfills Ataturk's words where he said, our future is in the skies. And I think this is a, a very uh, admirable demonstration of those words. So Halid, although uh, Turkey is a newcomer in this field, what could you tell us about the country's space program? How ambitious is it? Uh, indeed, Turkey seems a, a newcomer in the uh, human space flight, but Turkey started its first satellite in 1994 with Turksat. Uh, that's why we have a recent uh, involvement with the Turkey Space Agency uh, with uh, 10 specific roles. One uh, was the sending the first uh, astronaut to, to space. That's why, I mean, we can't really call Turkey to a newcomer in the space industry, but only human space flight. It just started a new era for Turkey. So, um, Andy, how would Turkey's space efforts contribute to scientific innovation and international collaboration moving forward? What should be done? Well, as you know, uh, Turkey has over 30 experiments in uh, life sciences, material science, uh, and, and other aspects uh, on this mission with Alper Bay. Uh, so they're making significant contributions again to uh, the, the, the environment in Turkey that allows the development of further technological and scientific research and development. I think most importantly, it's a huge inspiration for the youth in Turkey uh, that allows them or enables them to uh, feel like there's a future for them in space. Uh, not just as uh, engineers and operators and scientists and technicians, but also potentially uh, as space explorers. 
So, um, Halit, how connected are the aviation, space, defense, and software industries, and how do they support each other nowadays? Uh, the Turkey show a, a great effort, especially to produce its indigenous uh, uh, technologies for the last uh, couple of years, uh, starting with the, some drones industries. And of course, I mean, the, the aviation, defense, and uh, space are uh, next to each other and it's really supporting each other, including the new uh, digital uh, era is supporting each other because we are still uh, using almost the same technologies, now Newton's uh, third law, but we are uh, improving the, the site technologies and, and using it for innovation, uh, for um, cheaper and sustainable uh, opportunities. So uh, that's why uh, Turkey is uh, producing its uh, own technologies uh, and, uh, of course, it's using the whole capabilities in different fields. Mm. So, um, Andy, we know that Turkey has heavily invested in its aviation and defense programs. Where does it stand compared to its competitors, you think? Well, we like to think of things not in terms of competition, but in terms of cooperation. So. Uh, Turkey and is Turkey is not in competition with the rest of the world, but have now entered a phase where they're able to collaborate and cooperate on these various uh, technologies, high technologies that allow them to become, uh, allow Turkey to become a member, a true member of a spacefaring uh, community of nations. So, Halit, how close is Turkey to launching its own uh, systems to travel into orbit and eventually the moon? Uh. Out of 10 strategic goals uh, announced by the president himself uh, just uh, two years ago, uh, one was, uh, as I uh, mentioned before, was astronauts, but also uh, uh, building our own spaceport and uh, sending our indigenous rockets to space uh, was one of the main goals. So it was a 10 years uh, goal strategy. Uh, right at the moment, a couple of our companies uh, like Rocketsun and Delta V uh, heavily working on uh, this uh, challenge, uh, and actually Turkey reached to uh, uh, space limits, which is uh, over 100 kilometer altitude. Uh, we reached over 130 kilometers in a couple of times, uh, and now uh, our uh, target is to be able to send our uh, micro satellite to low Earth orbit. Of course, uh, sending the human space flights will take more longer. But everything uh, starts with a small step. Mm. So, Andy, you've just briefly uh, mentioned international collaboration. How much uh, international cooperation does Turkey need to move forward? And what are the main challenges? Well, Aisha, that's probably the most interesting question because we're entering the third phase uh, of space exploration in the first phase. We had countries like uh, the United States and, and the Soviet Union, or now Russia, uh, were the only uh, countries able to launch their own citizens into space. Uh, then uh, the second phase began with um, bringing on uh, members of the international community to fly on U.S. and Russian spacecraft to the International Space Station, uh, which is a partnership of, of 15, now 16 uh, different countries. Uh, China is the third country uh, on Earth able to launch uh, from its own country. And they, of course, have now only launched Chinese astronauts. But we expect that in the next phase, the third phase of, of space exploration, we'll have countries like Turkey uh, that are able to create indigenous launch vehicles, not only for satellites and other low Earth orbit assets, but also to launch human beings uh, mm -hmm. to space. So, mm -hmm. so um, Halit, uh, as uh, Andy just mentioned, the field of uh, space exploration was long reserved for a club of developed nations. How has that changed in the last decades? What were the driving forces behind it? Uh, yeah, the, the, it started with the competition, as we all know, between uh, Russia and the United States. And the other uh, countries uh, use it as a kind of prestige. Uh, and uh, try to be in the same club. Uh, but uh, with the recent involvement, especially with the commercial space flights, mm -hmm. uh, it's a new era that not only uh, states allow to send uh, astronauts, but also uh, private companies can help uh, states or private actors uh, to launch some humans out there. That means uh, 
I mean, uh, we have a limited number of astronauts, but with the with all new uh, private uh, actors, we will be able to see more and more nations uh, to be in the space uh, in the near future. Mm. So, Andy, what do you think? I mean, how private companies started taking over the state-owned ones in space programs, and has the world uh, moved from space for Earth economy to space to space economy? Well, certainly, uh, as Halit mentioned, the commercial organizations like Axiom, uh, who were responsible for this latest mission, are creating a new space economy. Um, they're creating their own space station. There will be additional commercial space stations under development and flying in low Earth orbit, which will expand the sort of ecosystem of uh, space opportunities to not only people that have been you know, carefully screened and selected by their national space agencies, but for other for universities, for institutions, organizations, uh, other national governments, uh, allowing them an opportunity to also uh, benefit from the research that's done in space. Mm. So, Halit, uh, Colonel Alper Gezeravci now has become the first Turkish citizen to travel to space. Do you believe his mission will inspire many young people in Turkey? And what kind of an example has he set for future generations? Uh, definitely, I do. Uh, yesterday, even though I was in Florida, uh, uh, in our center, in Gürkman Space and Aviation Training Center, there were uh, thousands of uh, people, including uh, many kids. And it's not only in our center, in all uh, science centers uh, all around Turkey, and in, even uh, in, the, in the big places in Istanbul, thousands of thousands of people watched this uh, uh, new era. And Alper Gezer Avcı is a really great example because uh, he, 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 he was uh, trained uh, by the, the states and he is uh, willing to give this uh, to, to the people. So that's why I guess he's a good example that everyone, uh, with the, it's an equal opportunity even to go to space in Turkey at the moment. So uh, that's why, uh, I mean, I'm 44 years old and uh, for the four, last 40 years, I was waiting and dreaming for this moment. And yesterday I watched it uh, also with my daughter and I saw how uh, bright her eyes are. Yeah. So I hope I can see my daughter also in space. All right, gentlemen, unfortunately, we'll have to leave it here. Thank you very much for joining me on Straight Talk.